Hello, I'm Adrian and today I'm going to be looking at the song Goo Goo Muck by The Cramps. I thought it was high time I looked at a Cramps song or two and I don't quite know why it's taken me so long to get around to it because I think The Cramps fit in really well with the kind of thing that I like to look at on my channel. They're bang, on message, on brand and uh, for me The Cramps kind of bridge the gap between the 50s rock and roll, rockabilly stuff that I like looking at through to the more alternative punky stuff. Uh, this song, Goo Goo Muck, I first came across it on the album Off The Bone, which I think is a kind of compilation album of early Cramps stuff. It's a fantastic song, got some great riffage from the great Poison Ivy and also some great rhythm guitar from uh, a marvellously named man called Kid Congo Powers. Now, I'm going to be talking about both of those things. It's um, it's a primitive song, pretty easy to play, therefore it's a beginner friendly song. So if you're a beginner, definitely have a go at playing this song. If you're not a beginner, still have a go at playing this song because it's, it's great. Uh, let me show you how. I'm going to kick off by looking at the rhythm guitar part then. And as I said, this is played by somebody called Kid Congo Powers. And my exhaustive research tells me that he was also a member of the Gun Club and played with Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds as well. So clearly a very groovy guy. And this is a really groovy rhythm guitar part, I think. And I'm going to show you how to play it in three different ways. Um, at the risk of sounding like a MasterChef contestant here. Um, rhythm guitar, three ways. Uh, pickled, uh, sous vide and uh, pan fried. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I will get on with this. Um, yes, I'll show you how to play it three ways just because uh, I want to give you a simple beginner friendly way of playing it just using some simple open position chords. Then there's a, a slightly more advanced way of playing it where we've got some bar chords in there as well and then I'm going to show you how I think it's actually played on the recording. I believe that on the recording it's played using an open E tuning. So I'll show you all three of those and uh, depending on, on where you're at um, you can kind of choose the appropriate way, way of playing it. All of them sound good though I think. So Starting then with the open chords way of, of doing it and uh, we're in the key of E and the opening rhythm guitar riff goes like this. We've got going between E and D. Uh, the song is basically a blues. Uh, we've got, it's all based around the 1, 4 and the 5 chords in the key of E. So that's E is the 1, A is the 4 and B is the 5. But it's not a 12 bar blues. I think it's, everything is kind of doubled up. So I'm, I'm guessing it's probably a 24 bar blues in, in a way, although I've not actually counted the, the bars. I'm really just, just feeling where these, these chords change. So have a listen to it and see what you think. But the, the opening rhythm guitar riff, as I say, goes like this. And the rhythm and the strumming, I think, is important here. So I'm playing this down, 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 up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, up, up, down. So notice that we're changing to the D in, in two different places. We're going one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four. And we're pushing into the D in the second bar there, so changing on the and of two. So um, important you get that right, and I think strumming it in exactly that way will help reinforce that rhythm. <laughs> That's uh, opening chord pattern. I'm not sure how many times you play that. It's, it's done about four times, I think, as an intro. The first verse starts, so when the sun goes down and the moon comes up. And turn into a teenage goo Then we're changing really to the four chord. So this is all based around an A chord, but we're, we're mixing in a bit of G as well, so that the pattern is now... So exactly the same rhythm, exactly the same strumming. Yeah, cruise through the city and along the street. And then we're back to 
E to D. Looking for something that is nice to eat. And then we've got the, the kind of stops that the, the band all does together. You better duck when I show up. The goo -goo -walk. So on that bit there, I'm going to the five chord. So here I'm just playing a, a B7 just to keep it beginner friendly. And then going to A. And the rhythm there is uh, one and two and three, four, one and two and three, four. Uh, you could play that with all down strokes or you could keep the, the down up thing going and uh, keep strumming with the rhythm of the song, in which case you would strum this one and two and three, four, one, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, then back to the That's the first way of playing the rhythm guitar part for this song, probably the most beginner friendly way of doing it. If you're slightly more advanced you might try to get some bar chords in there as well. So you could play the opening riff just E to D as, as I've just shown you. But then when it goes to the four chord you could move up to the fifth fret and play some E form bar chord, so just go up to the A here and then the G at the 3rd fret, so... Exactly the same strumming and rhythm. And then when we go to the 5 chord again you could use a bar chord, so I'm playing a B major bar chord here at the 7th fret down to A so that's the second approach you can take on the rhythm guitar of this song now I just want to briefly talk about the the way that I believe it's played on on the recording um, it's just something about the sound of the rhythm guitar that that makes me think that it's played in an, an open E tuning and uh, once you've got the the tuning it's actually pretty easy to play so let me just briefly tune up. So with open E tuning you're basically making your guitar sound like an E chord with just the open string. So we're going to need to take the A string up two frets as it were to a B. We're going to tune the, the D string up till it sounds like an E and we're going to take the G string up to a G sharp. So something like that. So we've now got an open E chord with just our open strings. Uh, that means that we can play the opening rhythm part like this. The E is just playing the open strings. We can play a D with one finger at the uh, at the tenth fret. So I'm just going to tune up with my tuner here or it's going to sound, sound horrible. Um, because of the, uh, the tremolo system on a jazz master, it, it takes a few attempts to actually tune to open E. Um, bear with me, here we go. That should do it. So yeah, the, the opening riff can now be played like this. We've got E chord and then the D chord is just one finger all the way across at the, at the 10th fret. So we can go. definitely got the, the vibe of the original recording when you have that open chord sound. to the G we can just again use these one finger bar chords so this is now the fifth fret to the third fret
duck, we've got B at the seventh fret, down to A. So that's the rhythm guitar part played uh, as I believe it's played on the recording. Let's get into this great lead guitar part then, played by the great Poison Ivy Rorschach. And I believe this is played in standard tuning. And you might like to think of this guitar part in terms of the notes in the E minor pentatonic scale. Uh, not sure Poison Ivy herself <laughs> probably thought in terms of scales particularly often, but it may be helpful. If you don't know the E minor pentatonic scale, it goes like this. starting on that open low E string and then it's the third fret and just going through the through the strings open second open second open second open third open third the E minor pentatonic scale and then there are some extra notes that added into that scale so you can add in a couple of B flats which gives you a blues scale so you're adding in that first fret note on the A string same note here at the third fret on the G string that gives you an E blues scale so it might be helpful to bear that in mind as you're learning this song. On to the guitar part itself then and it kicks off with this uh, well, there's the rhythm guitar comes in at the start of the song then when the sun goes down and the moon comes up, lead guitar enters. And we've got these great twangy riffs, which I suppose they answer the, the vocal phrases. You've got when the sun goes down, the moon comes up, and then the, the lead guitar provides the answer to, to, to that phrase. And it goes like this, starting on this B note here at the second fret on the A string, you've got B. Then an open D, D sharp, E. We'll play that E again, and then we're going down to our starting note, the B, playing that two more times. And then we've got E, 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 back to B. Then playing that B note four more times. Simple enough, I suppose, that the rhythm is the important thing here. You may be lucky and just be able to pick up this rhythm just by feeling it and just by listening, but if, if you struggle with rhythm, then you might like to count it out to start with. And uh, this, this riff is coming in on the end of beat three, so you've got something like one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one and two and Picking-wise, you've got a couple of choices. I think I tend to play this with all downstrokes of the pick, um, and that's got uh, that's got the advantage that you can kind of dig in with the downstrokes. It's just got a more a bit more attitude to it. I think if you're playing it all with downstrokes. Uh, alternatively, you could uh, do some some upstrokes in there as well, um, and I think that actually can can help with the rhythm, particularly if if, if you're uh, more of a beginner, and you can have the the direction of your pick going with the rhythm of the song, so one and two and three and four. Um, if, if a note falls on a downbeat, it's going to be a down pick. If a note falls on an upbeat, it's going to be an up pick. And, and that can actually be, be really helpful to help you get the rhythm. So if I do it like that, let me just try and get my picking hand in view, that, that would look like this. We'd have one and two and three. Up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. you which way you go there with the picking maybe try try both approaches and see what you like best 
So that, that's our opening opening riff. Then we kind of repeat the same riff, but it ends a little bit differently. So that that then goes like this. <laughs> The last couple of notes are different there. We're going from the B down to B flat and then the open A string. And then we've got another riff, that's this one. This is the riff which fits over the, the four chord or the or the A chord going to the G. So we, we have um, so starting with the open low E string and then G at the third fret back to E and then A A G E G A A A low E and four more times. So same rhythm as before one and two and three and four and one two three four and one and two and three uh, then we're back to the opening riff again then we've got a couple of bars where it's just the rhythm guitar this is the uh, you better duck when I show up bit when I show up goo goo then we're back to the opening riff or really just a variation on that opening riff we've got the low E string and then the E note an octave higher open D second fret on the A string B open D again and then E, 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 B. So that's the, the first verse of the song. I just want to play through the entire first verse then in time so you can hear how that all fits together. We've got one, two, three, when the sun goes down and the moon comes up. That's the first verse and the second and third verses are basically the same thing, perhaps just a little bit busier. So some of those gaps between the phrases you're actually filling in with some uh, kind of open E and A string. So the, the second verse for instance, let me just play, uh, play this through for you. Two, three, four. <laughs> Notice also there in the second verse that um, the the lead guitar is playing during that uh, that stop break bit. You just got uh, you you better duck. And going from the G A B flat B. You better duck when I show up. Then back down again from B B flat A. And then back to the uh, the main riff. 
onto the guitar solo and again it's pretty straightforward and primitive E minor pentatonic E blues scale stuff but just because it's quite simple doesn't mean it's easy to get it sounding right so make sure you focus on playing it with the right tone and the right attitude and try and get the, the rhythmic things right as well. I think it's the rhythm that makes this solo rather than it being a load of flashy licks or something like that. Uh, so solo kicks off with this idea. We've got two, three, four. Um, oh, let me turn up. Two, three, four. <laughs> climbing up the E blues scale really here. We're starting with this E note here, the second fret on the D string, going up the scale. Hitting the B flat note here, which we're just bending slightly sharp. And then we're playing the same note again two more times. And then coming down the scale, back to the E, so. some open B string and some open high E string. Then we're into this idea. So pretty simple stuff. It's just all the E open top string and then the G at the third fret. giving that third fret note just a little bit of a vibrato or, or a bend just to add some movement there. Again, rhythm, rhythm is the important thing here. It's one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four. Really just the same phrase repeated, but with some open E string at the end. Then we're into this idea. the open B string and then we're sliding up to the fretted B note at the fourth fret on the G. Then we're coming down to the B flat and we're playing that at the same time as the open B string and then you get this really nice minor second dissonant sound. So we're playing that followed by the open B doing that again and then we've got another open B and another slide up to the fretted B. And then we've just got this little descending line which is the open B string. Just running down the pentatonic scale as far as that B note. And then we've really got the last phrase of the solo which is this one, two, three. kind of pentatonic and blues scale based again. We're starting on the open B string, coming down the blues scale, back up to the B and then down the descending on the G string again and resolving to the E note there. So again ry rhythm of that lick is one and two and three and four and one and two last four bars or so of the solo are all just on a single note. Just uh, getting into some, some rhythmic stuff there, maybe giving it a little bit of vibrato as well. That's the guitar solo. I'm just going to play the whole thing through for you in time fairly slowly so you can hear how that all fits together. So we've got one, two, Bye. 
that's the guitar solo, and, and that's just about it for the song, really. Uh, the uh, only other bit is just at the very end. We, we play the third verse, and then the outro is just the main riff repeated. <laughs> to end it just goes ending on that open low E string. What gear are you using in this video I hear you ask? Well let me tell you guitar wise I thought for this particular song it would be appropriate to use my Jazzmaster. It's a 65 American vintage something or other Jazzmaster. Not a real vintage one but a kind of reissue of the, the 65 Jazzmaster got a nice bright twangy sound which works for this song. Not exactly sure what Poison Ivy would have used on the original to this song. I know that when you see pictures of her she was often using a, a Gretsch but whether she used a Gretsch in this particular era of the cramps I've not really any idea. From my Jazzmaster going into my mini pedal board here which I've made a video on in the past just using one pedal and that pedal is the Wampler Tumnus and just using that with the gain on fairly low just to add a bit of uh, je ne sais quoi to the, the sound. From there going into my twangiest amp, that's the Fender Deluxe Reverb and going into the normal channel there. Treble's probably a bit higher than I would normally have it just to get maximum twang and the other important element of this sound is tons of reverb so I've got that right up on seven there. That's your lot for today. I may well be looking at another Cramps song or two in the future because I really enjoyed putting this video together, so look out for that. In the meantime, enjoy learning this one and do check out my website. I will be writing out the music and the tab to this song in full meticulous and very uncramps like detail, so check that out if you want to and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.